Hello! Welcome to today's watercolor tutorial. Today we're going to be painting from a photo reference. So there are certain things that you need to keep in mind when you're painting from a photo reference. Things having to do with the quality of the photo that you start with, etc. But let's start learning about those things in today's tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be painting from a photograph. And so I wanted to point out a few benefits and drawbacks of painting from a photograph before we get started on the actual work. I want to paint this very cute picture of the mother goose with her little gosling. But I don't like these pillars and I don't like these ropes. So when you're painting from a photograph, it's quite simple to simply not paint the things that distract from your composition. And if you still need references for how they would look if, say, there was a bush over here instead of just asphalt, you can combine different references, and in so doing, you create something that the camera can't create. What I've done here is I've drawn the shadows on the sidewalk, I've drawn the geese, and now I want to just quickly draw this little impression of the rock edge and the rope because I like the idea that they're crossing a road. I just don't want all those distractors. And then imagine what it would look like if this was all just gray. Seems a bit boring. So maybe we can put something up here, like another little shape that could be the edge of the road that they're going to. Then once you've drawn your most important shapes and you're satisfied with the way they look in pencil, I have used some masking fluid to preserve the highlights that would be difficult to preserve with my brush. So here on the goose's head, the beak, this very skinny edge of highlight on the neck, and some of these fluffs on the chick, I have preserved to keep them bright. And then other than that, everything is going to be kind of blurry in the background. So I'm going to paint that wet on wet. Now when you're painting wet on wet, it's easy in watercolor to lose control. So I'm going to use a technique called water masking. All I do to water mask is to paint clean water with a large flat, oh this is a little bit dirty about water, but since it's asphalt it doesn't matter anyway. I'm just going to paint it with a large flat brush and what I'm doing that is masking is I'm avoiding the shape of the foreground objects, in this case a goose. I'm creating space where the water will want to flow and where it will want to not flow. So then into that I'm going to drop a lot of different shades of grays and browns and what I'm doing here is focusing on where it's dark and where it's lighter. So it doesn't really matter what color, I just want some interesting gradations going on and this is the dark area here. I want to keep that dark because the eye is drawn to contrast. So if this is my light area, then I've really got to bump up the dark over on this side to make it different. And see how well the water masking is working. As long as you stay careful around the edges, the paint is going to want to stay away from those dry lines. And if you want, you can give it a little spritz with some water from a clean water bottle, just like that, and let it bleed out a little bit more. And then we're going to let this dry completely. Now the background is dry. And working from back to front, I want to put in some of these speckles. There's gravel and maybe some leaves and things like that. So we're going to texture in here and in this rock, and then we'll move down to this section here. So when you're texturing, that means that you're going to use a toothbrush in many cases, and so I'd like to protect the rest of the area with a piece of clean paper, and then I get an ordinary toothbrush, fill that with my dark color that I'm using for speckling, and then just flick it right over the top like this. That spatter will lend itself to a lot of different things like gravel, just an interesting broken pattern like we see in asphalt. But then I'll take that off, we'll let that dry, and rinse out the toothbrush, and in the meantime we can go into the rock and this area over here. So for this I'm just going to use a round brush. This is a little bit wet, not much, because I want to do a dry brush technique to get down this texture and that works best if there isn't a lot of moisture in the bristles so they'll kind of come apart like this. 